Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and uh, thank you again for uh, joining us in this uh, series on refuting the scientific miracles of the Quran. We've really been having a lot of fun going through uh, these claims. Obviously, there is a lot of them out there. We're doing our best to cover at least some of the, um, uh, you know, maybe powerful ones so far that uh, deserve to be addressed. And we will continue, Lord willing, myself and Dr. J. Smith, to add to this particular series. But also, periodically, you're going to hear me or, or Dr. Smith uh, talking about number two, number three, number four. These are our own numbers. So I don't want you to think like a Muslim, have them in that order. Uh, this is just to make it easy for you to try to find um, what we're talking about. But every one of these episodes deals with one claim. So you'll have a title for that claim. And hopefully you can share it with others. And hopefully others, when they Google and search for these topics and how they were refuted, they will come across this series. And with that says, we welcome, of course, your interactions with us, comments, and uh, share with us if you're a Muslim, uh, whether you agree or disagree as well. And if you disagree, why do you disagree? I mean, give us substance to, to uh, look into and be able to interact with you. Today, we're going to talk about yet another uh, one of those claims found in the Quran, the claim that uh, Solomon was, of course, a wise man, according to the Bible. And the Quran says that he was so wise that he's given even special abilities to communicate with animals, with birds, and even with ants. And with that says... I'm going to ask Dr. J. Smith to address this. Yeah, this is a fascinating one. Uh, before we say anything, Kurt, no one's suggesting that God cannot uh, uh, give the ability of, of course. Solomon to be able to understand ants or um, birds. It could. I mean, God has the power to do anything. Absolutely. That's certainly within his power. That's not what we're questioning here, okay? So when Muslims are hearing us, please, that's not what we're reading. Let's go and read the text, and let's pick out a few things that I have difficulty with. Uh, it's in chapter 27 of the Quran, and we're reading verse 18 and 19. Uh, verse 18, uh, till when they came to the valley of the ants. So we're dealing with ants here. One of the ants said, O ants, enter your dwellings, lest Suleiman, which is Solomon, and his hosts should crush you while they perceive not. So here you have ants talking to each other. Be careful, ants. Let's get inside. Otherwise, we might be crushed by Solomon and his army as they walk across. So he, this is verse 19, Suleiman, smiled, amused at her speech, and said, My lord, Grant me the power and ability that I may be granted your favor. So here he is. He's listening to the ants. He can hear the ants speak. Now, <clears throat> can Solomon hear ants speak? Is that possible to do so? God and his power can do anything. The difficulty I'm having here is what and how do ants speak? Have you ever heard an ant speak? I mean, if we're talking whales, we know whales make noises. Okay. But ants, I, I don't do know. Do ants speak? Have you ever put I've your ear to the I've never heard ha anything. Has there ever been any... A, a recording of ants speaking? The answer no, is they no. They signal to each other in some way. Or well, fashion. actually, they don't signal. There is a way that ants do communicate. And if you look at any program on ants, go on BBC. In fact, there's some great programs about the ants, enormous amount of programs because they're such industrious little creatures. And they're moving quickly, quickly, quickly. And then they also stop. And then they, they right. actually, their heads come together. And what are they doing? They're not talking. Notice what they're doing. They're antennas. Are the antennas touching each other. And what are they doing? They're exchanging pheromones, chemical. There's no noise whatsoever. The only noise you're hearing is their feet hitting the ground. And that can be picked up, uh, by, but that's not communication. The communication is the antenna and exchanging chemical pheromones. If that were the case, did was Solomon given these antenna? Yeah, I mean... Uh, I mean, here's something I'd like to ask Muslims. How would you explain? How did he hear the ants speaking? How was he able to understand what they were saying and be able to smile unless he had uh, either had pheromones? I'm not saying it can, it's impossible. i just like to know how this could be, how this was done. And I don't think, I think what was happening here is... Um, if you, if, uh, my sons love to watch cartoons, and there's a beautiful cartoon about ants. And you can see the ants underground, and they're yelling out loud. And you can imagine, when, even when you look and observe an ant, you could assume they're t that they're talking to each other because you could, uh, you, though they're so small, I can imagine a man would think that ants spoke. In 7th century, this would be quite normal. So that it, it could be quite normal that God would give them the ability to be able to pick up what they were saying mm -hmm. uh, in whatever language. We now know today that's not how it happens. It doesn't happen through any uh, any. 
uh, any noise or any type of vocal c communication. There is no sound waves. It is all through chemical exchange. Absolutely. And I mean, uh, this incident would have taken place around the reign of Solomon, about a thousand years before, before the time of Christ. Nowhere in the Old Testament, for instance, did it talk about such a special Ability. gifting that was given to Solomon. I mean, uh, we, we read about a lot of strange, you know, things that happened, basically. Uh, why would God hide something like this from us, you know? He could have said, I mean, I granted him that, you know, uh, power to be able to... Can I exchange? To... And I tell you where I think this comes from? Yeah. If you look at chapter 27, almost the entire story of Solomon, because he doesn't only talk to ants, he also talks to a bird. Right. The hoopoe bird. That's right. Name known as the hoopoe bird because of hoopoe, hoopoe. Mm -hmm. That story of the hoopoe bird and Solomon... That story, along with the ants, and also everything that the Hooper bird does, flies down to Sheba, meets the Queen of Sheba, who talks to him as well. So here, both the Queen of Sheba can talk to birds, and Solomon can talk to birds. Well, mm -hmm. that's a little bit more understandable, because birds do make sounds. And right. that, uh, you can pick that up with your ear. Anyway, she comes up with the Hooper bird up to meet Solomon, because he's too busy marching his birds, getting them ready for battle, left, right, left, right, and they fly up over the enemy, and they drop stones with the name of the enemy on the bottom of the stones, and they kill the enemy that way. Now, that is, when she comes then to the court of Solomon uh, there, opens the door into the throne room. Solomon's sitting on his throne. She's across, comes in the door. And As she's about glass. ready to cross out, there is a pond. Mm -hmm. And she sees it, and she picks up her skirts to keep from uh, getting wet. That's where the story ends in cha uh, chapter 27, verse 44. It's from verse 17 to verse 44 you see this whole story. Right. Including the ants that we've just talked about in verse 18 and 19. Now... That story is borrowed story. That's not in your Bible. I never of saw that. Course, I would have loved course. to have had that story in my Bible. I missed out in Sunday school because we never had such an engaging story. And there would be movies could have been made about this, and I would have loved those movies. The reason why it's not in the Bible is, is because this is an apocryphal account. Mm -hmm. This is a Jewish apocryphal account. It comes from the second Targum of Esther. Second Targum of Esther, you can go to your library. You can even pick it out. That's the source for this. That was written in the 2nd century. This book was compiled in the 7th to 8th century. The Jews that were had contact with the compilers of the Quran, you notice I'm being very careful not to say Muhammad. That's why I jumped on you the other time. This, the, whoever wrote this book had access to these stories, not to the biblical stories, for one very good historical reason. The biblical stories of Solomon, the true stories of Solomon and Sheba and all that happened in the Old Testament had yet to be translated into Arabic. Mm -hmm. These were not translated until the 8th century. Therefore, whoever put the Quran together did not have access to the authoritative story. They just had access to the ones the Jews were giving them over the, over the fires, the camel fires, the, where they were the caravan fires at night. Those stories right. were apocryphal accounts. They had, were already translated into Arabic. That's why the Arab... Uh, writers picked up these stories, like the second Targum of Esther, written in the second century. They wrote it in the seventh or eighth century. That's why you find them in Surah Absolutely. chapter tw uh, twenty-seven. And you know what, uh, Jay? You gave me an idea. I know you did one time a very short video <clears throat> about some of the sources of stories that are found in the Quran. I think we should do a series on this. We can take one There's of these. There's a whole other series we Absolutely. can do. Absolutely, uh, because the people need to know. Here is the story in the Quran. You think it's from the Bible? Guess what? Here is the source that it came from. And this is an apocryphal account. No Jew in their right mind would go to Second Targum of Esther to uh, Second Targum of Esther to say what uh, what Solomon did. Why? Ask any Jew and they'll tell you these are nothing more than children's t fables. That's right. That's right. I mean, uh, rabbinic teaching, re Talmud, Midrash, who knows? You know? All of these were more, more like children's fables. <laughs> they were taught to kids at like bedtime stories, but they would take these stories that they heard from in their as they would be traveling, because remember, most of them were in the diaspora. They had been thrown out of Jerusalem in 70 AD at the destruction of the temple. They had to move out into the diaspora. They took their scriptures with them, wrapped, wrapped up in their scrolls. Those they protected. They didn't let anybody read them. But what they would tell the kids at nighttime were these stories they heard, they were counting from other sources, they would take these stories and put biblical names to them. Right. I mean, so the Solomon story. was given in, but no Jew would ever tell their kids, this is what really what happened to Solomon. If you want to know what happened to Solomon, come back to the school. Absolutely. Come back to this book. And I know, I know we're not talking about the fall, but even the story of the fall and the idea that Satan uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the one that uh, refused to uh, bow down and worship Adam when he was created and caused him to uh, stumble and then God forgave him after the fall. I mean, 
there is another source for that as well. Listen, I mean, we can go to chapter 5, the story of Cain and Abel. We know the source for that. We can go to chapter right? 21, verse uh, 51 to 71, the story of Abraham in the Kaaba, yeah. destroying the idols and then being thrown the fire pit. We That's know the right. source for that. In every one of these, you can almost see, we can pretty much look at good 70% of the biblical material in the Quran and source it back to apocryphal writings. Yep. Some right. of it is from the Old Testament itself. No doubt, no doubt. There is a mixture. You know, there is some truth. But then there is other... But these fantastic things like ants yeah. Yeah. speaking to Solomon or I'm able to hear the ants, that is from an apocryphal account. That comes from the second Targum of Esther. Absolutely. Well, as you can see, everybody, um, we are already making planning for a brand new series. So hold on, you know, uh, to uh, until we make that announcement because uh, it seems uh, that we can do a whole bunch of videos just on sources for many of these stories that are found in the Quran. But hopefully you've enjoyed this particular one, uh, dealing with this claim that Solomon, and as my brother here mentioned, we're not really doubting that God can give those abilities to Solomon or anyone for that matter to communicate with birds or ants, but we're wondering, you know, how could this be possible? What is the source for it? And therefore we need to at least pause for a second and ask these kind of questions. So hopefully you find this uh, yet another helpful tool in your ministry. Thank you so much for joining us and God bless you. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.